You have a W YouTube, what's up boys and girls, it's your boy Zockstar. Once again, coming at you with another vlog. On today's vlog, another tour. Um, we're going out on tour B. The van has just pulled up to the front and we're going to go down, get some towels and then do this tour. So join us on this tour. Um, hopefully it should be a nice day. It is a little bit windy. This road is going to be a bit choppy. I'm not going to take the drone because I can see the waves from here. Um, and these bunker boats aren't really that protective when it comes to water splashing. So, without any further ado, let's Scooby Doo. Alright, so we're waiting here at this uh, staging area. First staging area, I guess. Uh, I think they gather a few people here at this little office and then they take us down to the beach area for the second staging and then we jump on the boats so just waiting now for I think a couple of more people to turn up and then we're off, off to the beach so we're down here now near the beach in the second staging area this is where all the people gather in the mornings and one by one they take them out to the boats just out there. So we're just waiting I think for the last couple of stragglers to, to show up and then they're gonna load us onto one of these boats. This woman has been standing there for like about 20 minutes no one's no one wants to help her so they're not that organized here. Let's see how we go. Good morning. Morning. Okay, so we're on the boat. We're just ready. We're just waiting for the other boat to move so we can head off. A bit of pandemonium here. Walking out into the water and it's chest deep, waves are crashing against you, and you're trying to climb into a boat. But that's what you get when you talk a cheaper tour. These guys here, they're on the board. They just climb into boats off those jetties there. I think I've said this in one of my previous videos, try come down to the beach and have a look at the boats and have a look where they're loading and then try and organise your tour from them. Otherwise, you're walking through the water like these guys. Okay, so this is, this was Entalula Beach. We only got like 10 minutes here. Just walked out, had, a, had one drink. Just about to put our snorkel on and go for a swing. We're getting called to get back on the boat, so not a good start. So we've come here to Snake Island. Got a bit of a sandbar here that extends stop the other island there. You can see the waves meeting on both sides. It's just a shame there's no sun. It's overcast. 
every now and then the sun peeks through, but at the moment it's hiding behind some clouds. So we're going to walk up to a viewing deck. Just up over there. As you can see, there are quite a few tourists here. Sitting here doing nothing. I need to be hurry up. I need to hurry up. So here you walk through this little foresty area and make your way up to the viewing platform or the viewing deck. I'm not sure what's up there but we'll see when we get there. Oh, just hit my head. Gotta be careful here. Whew. Already tiring. treacherous along here. Wonder how many people have fallen down. Alright, we'll see you up the top. So this is the view you get from up the top here. Shame the sun's not out completely, otherwise you'd see just some beautiful water there. The sandbar that goes from that, that from that side all the way across to here. It's just beautiful. Shame this Sony doesn't have an input, input jack for the mic because it takes absolutely beautiful pictures. The videos are just as good, it's just the audio, especially on windy days like this, as I'm sure you can hear it. A lot of shushing and swirling and see the footage. Yeah, just wait till we get up here. Alright guys, so that was the little trek up to the view deck. Now we're off to our next destination. Even though the sun's not out, it is extremely hot today. The wind makes it a little bit, a little bit more comfortable, but it's still hot. So we're done walking up and down this sandbar at Snake Island. We're starting to head back to the boat and I believe we're going to our third destination and possibly even lunch. So we'll see you in a few minutes. We've got these guys that float around on these little kayaks selling drinks, beers, buko. And it's quite refreshing because you don't get no drinks served on these boats until you have lunch. So even early in the tour when the sun's out and you're thirsty, you'll find these guys floating around in their kayaks selling drinks. We've already had one on the previous uh, destination. So we're going to hold off till we get to the next island and wait for our lunch. Okay, 
so we've just finished lunch a couple of the last people are just cleaning up the plates a couple of guys playing b-ball just relaxing nice place to have lunch Guys, we're at our last destination. Um, I'm not sure what it's called. I got distracted from our last destination where we had um, our lunch. I'm not happy at all. I've lost my uh, Panasonic underwater camera. I don't know whether it fell out as we we're walking out from the boat to the shore or whether someone took it from our table where we were having lunch. Um, Extremely disappointed. Um, let's put a sour note on this. On this tour for today. It's a really good camera, really good underwater camera. It took really nice photos. And I'm extremely, extremely upset. So we just, this is our last destination. We're just going to go around, take a couple of pictures. And we're heading back, so yep. That was the tour for the day, now we're heading back. Uh, it's a little bit wavy where we started off the day, so they're going to drop us off at uh, the Karot Karon side, which is the little beach around the left hand side of the main beach. So that's not too bad, it's only a few minutes away from our hotel. And hopefully we're not going to get soaked on the way, but it's starting already, so get ready for the um, the shower. Dognong Beach. That's where we went to have lunch today and that's where I lost my camera. So we might grab a private boat tomorrow and go and see if we can find it. Alright guys, welcome back. We've come back to our room. I've had a shower, freshened up a bit. Now the wife's going to jump into the shower and get herself ready. Um, just a bit of a recap on what happened today We went on the tour B um, Let me set this up uh, We're gonna go right there uh, yep, there, right, okay, yeah, so we went on tour B 
wasn't a bad tour. Um, mainly it was just sort of like going to some beaches. Didn't really involve much snorkeling. Um, they said you can go and snorkel just off the beach there, but didn't didn't look anything. It didn't look snorkel worthy. Um, now, getting back to my camera that vanished, disappeared, lost. I'm really not sure what happened to it. Um, I'm pretty sure when I got off the boat, I left it on the boat. And then when we all got off, once I realised it was gone, I came back to the boat and asked the, uh, one of the guys in the boat, did anyone see my blue camera? And they all sort of, you know, they all sort of sk skittled around looking, looking for it, and uh, no one could find it. So I'm a little up in arms as to what really happened to it. Um, I'm pretty sure when we got off the boat, I left it on the seat. Um, so that's sort of indicating to me a bit of foul play. Um, I've never been scammed or robbed or had anything stolen from me in the Philippines. And this still might be a little bit early, but my first impressions are, I'm thinking maybe one of the guys on the boat happened to help himself to it. Because um, when I came back and pushed a little harder, the guys were sort of swimming around in the water, looking for it. And I noticed one of the guys yelled out from the back of the boat. He was like under the, up near the back, near the propellers. And there was a guy to the side of the boat, just down below next to me. And he sort of, he sort of didn't realise I was standing behind him. And the guy down near the back of the propellers, he said something to him. And the guy next, just in front of me, he, he gestured like this to shh, be quiet or something like that. I don't know what. I really don't know what that meant. Um, and I'm hoping it was probably talking about, oh, look at that sexy woman or something. But after telling my wife that, she's convinced that they were covering something up um, while they were in the water looking for my camera. So I'm not really sure how to, how to take this. Um, I'd like to think I dropped it in the water and if I did, well then that's my fault. Um, what we have decided to do is we're going to book another tour for tomorrow. We booked a private tour just the wife and myself and we're going back to the same beach and we're going to spend like an hour just snorkeling up and down in the, in the, in the area where the boat moored and where we got off. It's shallow water about a meter, meter deep so I'm hoping if I did drop it it'll be there um, why is the camera going all dark let me just move to some better lighting um, so yeah that's the situation at the moment I'm really disappointed because that was a Panasonic FT5 underwater camera it took amazing pictures I bought the equivalent camera in the Olympus and that was nowhere near as good. Um, the Panasonic just took beautiful photos in the dark with the flash, had a good flash. Um, it took really nice 1080 60p video or 60 frames per second video. Just a perfect camera to take with you on holidays when you're in the water, when you're underwater. It's really nice. So I'm really disappointed that's gone now. Um, so yeah. Uh, the tour, like I've said before in my previous videos, the bunker boat was one of those small ones. As soon as we started out of the port here, we had waves coming over the top and everyone was soaked five minutes into the trip. Um, that tour was booked through the hotel once again. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know how to how to put this in words uh, just to sort of say like like I suggested go down to the port go down to the beach have a look at the boats which the bigger boats the higher boats out of the water and you can tell which are the little flimsy ones and you can tell which ones are the decent bigger boats um, so do that go down check the boats out ask where that boat's going where that boat's going and then 
who are the tour operators for that boat and then go and book each uh, tour respectively. Um, yeah, still disappointed with that camera. I, even even Uncle Jack isn't helping me with this one. <laughs> I think I might need a couple of them to calm the nerves. So tomorrow we're going back and fingers crossed we um, we find it. I'm not I'm not overly confident that we'll find it, but I want to give it a go anyway. We have dropped this camera twice here in El Nido two or three years ago. But each time we found it, uh, on one instance, the wife dropped it and we couldn't find it. So we just yelled out to the, the, the guys on the boat, 1,000 pesos or reward if anyone finds the blue camera. And about 50 blokes jumped into the water and they were swimming around like like a, like the, what is it, like the sardine sardines in Mobwa and eventually within within a few minutes one guy's come up ma'am sir he got it so he got the reward of a uh, thousand peso on this instance I said to the captain I'll give five thousand spread the word we're still here for three days three or four days spread your word spread the word to your to your friends your mates if anyone goes to that beach to keep an eye out for the uh, for my camera this time I've offered 5,000 peso reward. Um, hopefully that might um, convince someone to actually spend a bit of time looking for it. Otherwise, we're going to go out tomorrow and have a bit of a rummage ourselves. And hopefully it ends up back in my hand because, like I said, it's a, it's a beautiful camera. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, yeah. Just disappointed. Um, let's put a let's put a downer on this holiday in El Nido. We started off with a good tour on the speedboat that was just beautiful, um, and this tour has just gone downhill. Um, part of the reason is the, f the first three destinations I used that camera to take some photos and some videos, and they were like really magical photos. Um, so, yeah, disappointed, disappointed. Um, okay, looks like my battery warning is flashing at me. I'm just going to change out the battery. I'll be back in three, three, two, one. I'm back. Um, yeah, what can I say? Not much. So, anyway, uh, we're back at the hotel. Going to have a the wife's just going to have her shower. I'm going to have a couple more of these Jack Daniels and Coke. Calm the nerves. And we'll get ready and go out and head out for some dinner. Not sure where we're going to go. We might just go for a bit of a walk and see what's out there. Um, yeah. Sad day. Sad day. Alright guys, we're all showered up, we're all cleaned up, we're all ready to go. We're going to go out and have some dinner and just walk around and see what we can find. So, we'll let you know what we decide when we get there. As you can see guys, there's no shortage of tourists in El Nido. Looks like they're building this massive complex across the road from the restaurant that we're at currently. It's like a three-story apartment, maybe a hotel. The guys are hard at work. Working away while everyone's lazing away. It's uh, quarter to nine and these guys are still working away here. All right, so part one of our meal has come out. What's this? The adobo pusit with ink. Adobo pusit. Pusit. Adobo pusit. Yeah. Adobo pusit. Adobo pusit. Pusit with 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 ink. With black ink. So this is the the squid ink. Oh, nice. I'm sure you know what that is. 
very nice. Yeah. And the wife likes the sauce so far. Spicy. Let's wait for part two. Yeah. Okay, there's part two, the Shanghai rice platter. Now we're waiting on the big burger, the all-in double burger, and, and, pork barbecue. and some pork barbecue. Nice looking tricycles rolling around in El Nido. You don't see these throughout the parts of the Manila and the Philippines. Okay, this is part three of our order, the all-in double burger. Doesn't look nothing like that picture up there. Big, but nothing like the picture. Alright guys, we're back from the El Nido Sky Grill restaurant. Um, what can I say about the Sky Grill restaurant? Nice. Um, burger wasn't as uh, indicated as the, the picture on the wall. It was decent. Uh, the fries for a change, they were crispy. Um, if anyone's watching this, French fries means to fry them. Masara. Not to sort of dip them in oil and put them out. The no, they need to be deep Masara. fried. Um, <laughs> out of 10, probably give it 7.5. And uh, the wife, what did you order? The I have the adobong squid. Adobong squid in the ink sauce. Ink sauce. Um, what do you? Barbecue. What do you think of that? That's masara. I'm gonna give it a nine. Okay, she's giving that one a nine, and then she had the uh, what was it? The Shanghai rice. Yeah. That was a little bit. I don't know. I think they might have just over fried it, in my opinion. But the wife loved it. Nice what would you give? The, what would you give the rice? I like it because I like it for me. It's ten. Oh, she gives that a ten. For ten me. out of ten for her. Um, because I like crispy things. My wife likes crispy things. When she has her fish, she burns the crap out of it. <laughs> um, so, as a Filipina, Filipino, most of the uh, Filipinos sort of tend to. How can I say it? Overcook things. They'll, if, it, if it's fried, they'll deep fry the hell out of it. Um, so she enjoyed that. It might be a little bit on the crunchy side for some others. <coughs> um, what else? Oh, and we had the uh, the pork barbecue. Small serve. Came with like, I think it was like, almost looked like what you'd put on one stick of the pork barbecue when you get it in the streets. So it was just a really small serve with one serving of rice. Uh, I'd give that probably about um, about a seven and a half to eight. It was nice. Just tend to lack some of that classical pork barbecue flavour. And what else? Oh, that's right. So everything there was getting like averaging about eights, eight and a halves. And then I thought, oh, I might have a bit of dessert, so I ordered the banana crepe. Uh, it was called the, the choco. Choco and mang uh, banana crepe. And normally if you've had a crepe, they sort of just drizzle some chocolate over the top of it. When it arrived, it didn't have any chocolate. It was just a banana crepe. Um, when I started to eat it, it just tasted sort of like just a really thin pancake uh, without the pancake flavor. Uh, so it was really sort of tasteless. I could just taste the oil that it was cooked in. I don't know what they cook most of this stuff here, which, what oils they use. I don't know if it's like a palm oil or, or I don't know. It just, it's, it's different. Uh, and the bananas, they just look like they were just chopped, chopped bananas and just thrown inside and fold the, fold the crepe over the banana. So I'll probably give that a probably a three. Um, so... Yeah, there you have it guys, the Sky Grill restaurant in El Nido. Um, not bad, not good. Uh, we did have two ladies behind us that sat down 
pretty much a minute or so after we arrived and we finished our meals our meals came out reasonably quick we finished our meals I ordered my banana crepe and I just happened to turn up turn around and I heard her say oh what's uh, we've been waiting for an hour blah 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 and I turned around and just sort of said oh what's what's going on and I said we've been here for over an hour and we, our food still hasn't arrived which is a bit disappointing to see that um, there wasn't that many people in the restaurant um, probably 15 maybe 18 people about six tables six or seven tables and yeah they just they're not they're not bringing out the food out on time for some of the other customers uh, we don't normally have that problem I've noticed that a lot with the foreigners when they travel through the Philippines um, I think because I'm married to a Filipina she I order mine and then she orders hers and then she talks in Tagalog and ask specific things and within minutes our food's out <clears throat> so I don't know if that's a, like an advantage for me for us having uh, one one part of this relationship Filipino in the Philippines um, it's an advantage whenever we go out somewhere or we need to ask a certain detail of a certain thing uh, we sort of get a priority reaction um, whereas I see other foreigners they'll ask they'll order and they're waiting minimum half an hour to an hour and they get quite disgruntled and sometimes they'll just get up and leave um, I think one of the couples they, they had like a shake and were waiting an hour and when the food came out or what I think the burger came out and he just just said no put his hand up and said no got up and walked away so I don't know what happened there I wasn't listening to that conversation so all in all that's our day um, disappointed I lost my camera we're gonna go out tomorrow back to the same island try and have a bit of a search around see if we can find it still sitting there somewhere in the sand hopefully I'm hoping none of the crew actually helped themselves to it and took it away um, I hope that didn't happen because I, I'm a firm believer of karma and I'd hate to see these guys have something bad happen to them just because they got a little bit greedy so hopefully we can find it tomorrow and it's just sitting on the bottom of the ocean there well not the ocean the beach and no karma for these guys I'm not accusing them I'm just throwing the option out it was either A or B so let's work out if it was B, if it was B then good, I got my camera back, all is good but if I don't find it tomorrow then I don't know, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide what you think happened. Um, so thanks for watching guys, thanks for joining us on this uh, trip and tour we had today. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click that link just there in the corner. If you are already subscribed and you haven't clicked that bell button, make sure you do. That way you are notified each time I upload a new video. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Even if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Either way, makes no difference to me. I prefer a thumbs up than a thumbs down. I'm doing my best. I'm not a vlogger. I'm not a travel vlogger. I'm just, I just decided to share my experiences throughout the Philippines like most people do. And I hope you guys are enjoying what we are showing to you guys. So, once again, thanks heaps, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.